My name is Dave Rickus. I'm a detective with the Olmstead County Sheriff's Office, and I've been with the departments for about 35 years. I'm Tammy Gross, and I'm a senior social worker for Olmstead County in the Adult Protection Unit. I've been working in the Adult Protection Unit for 17 years. I got a call from another uh, member of the department back uh, early on in 2013, said that uh, Adult Protection was looking for a part-time detective uh, to assist them in investigating financial exploitation crimes. We were noticing that we were increasing our financial exploitation cases and the financial cases are very burdensome in the amount of paperwork that's required and they're very labor intensive. The cases weren't being prosecuted for financial exploitation at a rate that we wanted them to occur. Um, we needed to get the word out to the community um, and we weren't getting the information out there the way that we anticipated we could. Um, and so we were able to obtain a retired sheriff's officer who came um, to us and that's really all he does now. So Detective Rickus has been working with us so now we are able to prosecute those cases Cases. So you'll see a lot more articles in the paper about individuals being prosecuted for financial exploitation of vulnerable adults. Um, they're going to the, getting to the county attorney's office, um, and then from there being criminally prosecuted. When I was a detective with the department full time before I retired, I was doing both property and people crimes. Uh, and in this job, I just do one, one investigation, uh, and that's the financial exploitation of vulnerable adults. Probably the biggest adjustment I had was just getting the language down that uh, community services uses. As far as the investigation, I just hit the ground running. In the last five years, we've had about 80 some cases assigned. Uh, not all of them are uh, exploitation. Um, I think there's been around 30 cases that have been charged out uh, and have gone through the court process. And I think the dollar figure for the cases we've looked at have been around $3 million. Working with, with Detective Rickus, we're able to kind of, we're able to do both a civil investigation and criminal um, collaboratively. So we do a civil, he does the criminal, so we're able to exchange information back and forth. Um, I'm able to get bank records, uh, medical records that he can then use in his criminal process. As far as we know, we're the only county in the state that investigates exploitation in this way. Uh, my office is out here with adult protection. Uh, when the case comes in, uh, it's given to me and then I'm, I work directly with another adult protection worker. Uh, we do the investigations together. Uh, we get documents together. We do our interviews together. Now, under Minnesota statute, uh, the vulnerable adults in Minnesota are categorized two ways. One is a, a functional vulnerable adult and these are people anybody age over 18 and above uh, that has a mental or physical challenge, uh, cannot protect themselves from harm, and more than likely are receiving services from an outside agency. The most common one we deal with is what's called the categorical, and these are the individuals that are usually in nursing homes, uh, have Alzheimer's, dementia, other medical issues, and Someone usually is the power of attorney, which again is probably a family member. And this power of attorney uh, handles most of the needs for that vulnerable adult. Financial exploitation can be that somebody's not paying a nursing home bill. Um, and they're not paying that bill because grandma or grandpa or mom and dad used to live with them and they're accustomed to having that income in the household and it's never dawned on them that now they have to pay for the nursing home. Um, or it's blatant that they're not paying for the nursing home and they're using the money for trips to Hawaii or Alaska. Um, you know, I think the things that when people are powers of attorney, they really need to know what their responsibilities are. Most attorneys that I have talked to uh, explain to the individual what all is entailed in being that power of attorney. Uh, back in about 2015, I think Minnesota changed uh, the documents, and in those documents now for the power of attorney, it kind of lists out what you can and can't do. 
we field calls from the community all the time. I mean, people will call in if they have concerns. And so if anybody thinks that a family member or a professional is not handling the finances correctly of someone else who's considered a vulnerable adult, you know, feel free to call in. We have an intake worker that's on um, every single day. Um, the direct line for our intake is 507-328-6557. Um, call and talk to us. It's the easiest thing to be able to, um, I know family doesn't want to get other families family members into trouble, but it's not really getting people into trouble, it's protecting that other person who can no longer protect themselves from that financial exploitation.